Welcome kids, so I heard you had trouble with Global. Lucky for you, I'm here to help with my Global Review Series. Good luck. There are several political systems that you need to know for your Global Regions. The first one is Democracy, which is a form of government where the authority comes from citizens. Citizens have the right to vote to elect their government officials. Example number one, which was direct democracy in ancient Athens. Note that only male citizens could vote. Women, slaves, or foreigners did not have these rights. Monarchy was the rule by monarchs, who were kings. There were many types of monarchies in Europe. Main example is the absolute monarchy, where monarchs received their authority from God, which was known as the divine right, and thus had total control over their population. The only time they didn't have that control was when the Catholic Church had more control over their regions, depending on the government, of course. Oligarchy was the political system where power or authority was held by a specific uh, group of individuals who, who usually had support of the military or, or and the church. Authority is based uh, on wealth and family connections. Communism was a political system created in Germany in the, in the 19th century by Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels which called for proletariat who were workers to rise up against capitalists in a violent revolution in order to create a utopian society where in theory power would come from workers you know in reality it never actually happened but first occurred in Russia in 1917 never to be confused with the Soviet Union because in 1917 Soviet Union did not yet exist. That's the tricky part about it. Soviet Union did not exist in 1917. It was Soviet Russia which occurred after the revolution. In Russia and later Soviet Union which was founded in 1922, communist system created dictatorial government where political power was held by one political party the CPSU, uh, which is known as the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. It was a one-party system, meaning there are, were no other political parties. There was no opposition. All private property wa was abolished. No private property. There was no freedom of speech, no freedom of press. Although not officially banned, religion was discouraged and suppressed by the Soviet government. Punishments for criticizing Soviet government were severe, but varied with years. So for example, during the years of General Secretary Joseph Stalin, you know, violators of those rules would be sent to prison camps in Siberia, which were known as Galax and they were subject to brutal treatment and harsh working conditions that caused many of them not to survive. Uh, in other words, many were branded as enemies of the people and were sent to those camps to, as punishment for their opposition. Hello kids, welcome back. We're on our second topic, which is the economic systems. There are three main economic systems that you need to know for your Regents exam. The first one is the traditional economy. That's where people survive through hunting, gathering, and or farming. An example, an economy during the Neolithic Revolution. Second one is the market economy, also known as capitalism. That's where People decide what to produce, purchase or sell. Supply and demand control the economy rather than government. 
music production is owned by the people which is the private ownership examples most modern western european countries as well as few asian countries for example would be south korea uh, there are a few other countries but you don't need to be that specific in your regions but one important detail to note is that you cannot i repeat you cannot use united states in your global regions i know united states is an excellent example for capitalism but you cannot use united states in your global regions leave the united states for well, for another regions that you need to take later on in high school but for now do not use united states in your regions now we're going to discuss the command economy which is an economic system where government has a total control over the means of production which means the government can plan what to produce how to produce it and how much it's going to cost a good example would be the soviet union which had a series of five-year plans to produce a number of products most of these plans were not realistic nor successful one of the weaknesses of the command economy besides planning was the fact that it was not really designed to produce consumer goods which was in effect one of the causes for the collapse of the Soviet Union but we're going to discuss it a little bit later but for now what you need to know is you cannot confuse command economy with communism from my experience students often tend to confuse them one is a political system while the other one is an economic one please learn the differences know the differences they're really simple you just need to memorize them welcome back kids topic number three geography it's often an underrated part of the region but it's called global history and geography for a reason it's not just about history you will not be able to get a good grade on a regions if you don't know basic facts about geography <laughs> now what is geography well simply put it's the study of earth and it, its features you must know the seven continents north america south america europe asia africa australia and antarctica you must know where they are located on the map bodies of water you must know the difference between oceans rivers straits and lakes uh, for oceans you have to know atlantic pacific indian and arctic also you have to know different types of maps physical which is mountains rivers etc and political which will have names of continents and cities now this those are just basic facts obviously you have to know basic facts like what's a peninsula it's covered by water on three sides what's an island covered by water on, on all of its sides you have to know those basic geographical features and the only way to really learn about them is for, for you to print a blank map from the internet and basically test yourself you know, how many of those features you are already uh, well versed it's the best way to learn geography you got to test yourself you have to have a map and you have to keep testing yourself there isn't much that I can tell you uh, because it has to be in front of you you have to study from a map gotta understand that you can't get a good grade on this regions if you are not geography now and you know how to learn it welcome back kids we are ready for our next topic which is the neolithic revolution very important topic for you global regions so what was the neolithic Lithic revolution 
you see about 10,000 years ago people start to, to change their lifestyles from hunter-gatherers to become more producers of food they learn how to farm how to herd domestic animals such as you know cows goats sheep etc people were settling down in permanent settlements where they built their homes and villages you know positives about it was that they could now grow more food that they could hunt and gather in the past you know on the downside they were now more vulnerable to attacks from other groups of people competing for those resources okay next topic is the river valley civilizations before we discuss the river valley civilizations kids we have to review one important topic what is a civilization? A civilization is an advanced form of culture with cities, some form of writing system, a social structure, as well as some skills in technology and science. Why did first civilizations form around river valleys? Well, there was access to water for drinking, watering crops, and traveling. That's the simplest way to put it. It's not complex. It's not rocket science. If you get this question on your thematic part of the regions, you should be able to do really well on it because it's one of the easiest things that you could get on the regions. Approximately 4000 BCE, first civilizations emerged around river valleys. Nile River Civilization, Egypt, Tigris and Euphrates River Civilizations in the Fertile Crescent, modern day Iraq. Indus River Civilization in India, Huanghao River Civilization in China. All of these river valley civilizations share the same characteristics we discussed earlier. You must memorize where they are located on the map and you can use their basic information that we discussed earlier to discuss any of those river valleys in case you get something like this on your thematic part of the regions. Of course it all depends on the type of questions that you get, but a lot of those basic definitions can be interchangeable okay okay now it's time to talk about Mesopotamia also known as Sumer Sumerians invented the earliest form of writing system it was called the cuneiform which was the system of writing based on symbols on clay tablets they also invented the calendar divided into 12 months. Sailboat, wheel, and many tools from bronze and copper. They built first cities using modern bricks they, and reed. Uh, they also built temples, pyramids, and walled cities. There were also Babylonians who overthrew Sumerians around 2300 BCE. They had a leader named Hammurabi who not only conquered that region, but he created the first form of law, the Code of Hammurabi, which is an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. It's important to know that the punishment varied based on a social class. Rich people often paid fines while commoners would be physically punished. The next topic that we're going to discuss is Ancient Egypt, which uh, occurred from the years 3200 BCE to about well, approximately 500 BCE. It was built around the Nile River Valley. It was protected from invasion by the Sahara Desert. So what the desert did is it created conditions that made it very difficult, not impossible, but very difficult for anyone to invade them. That means that they could develop, which they did, a prosperous and advanced 
civilization. Their social structure was with a pharaoh, whom Egyptians considered literally to be divine, so they thought of him as a living god, so to speak. Pharaoh was an absolute ruler of Egypt with complete control over its society. See, later in the social structure were the priests, nobles, warriors, scribes, merchants, peasants, and slaves. Religion played a huge part in the lives of ancient Egyptians. They believed in a form of polytheistic religion, uh, where many gods, such as were Osiris, Ra, and Isis, ex um, they believed to exist. But when you think think of the word polytheistic, you should think of many gods as opposed to monotheistic religion like uh, Judaism, and Christianity, and Islam, which we will discuss later on. Well, what ancient Egyptians did is they built huge pyramids to serve as resting places for dead pharaohs, because pharaohs were once again considered to be living gods. They also mon practiced mummification, which was believed to allow people to use their bodies in the afterlife. In the afterlife, religion were, played a huge part in the lives of ancient Egyptians. Okay, now we're going to discuss the accomplishments of ancient Egyptians. Hieroglyphics, which was a form of writing using picture symbols. Architecture, Egyptians built pyramids, temples, palaces, statues, etc. Science, Egyptians learned a lot about the human body and practiced surgery. And they were the first known people to use math. Egyptians also developed papyrus. First material made of reed and resembled paper. Welcome back kids. It's topic number five, classical civilizations. Uh, the first civilization that we're going to discuss will be the Phoenician civilization, which flourished around 1200 BCE to about 500 BCE in the Middle East on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. They developed an alphabet which influenced alphabets of other civilizations. They also influenced alphabets of European civilizations, as well as the English alphabet. They were excellent traders and sailors who used these skills to spread their ideas and establish colonies along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. So when you think about Phoenician civilization, think about Mediterranean Sea. It's going to make it a lot, a lot, a lot easier. And you want to make it easy because you want to pass. The Persian Empire. It was located in modern-day Iran. It dominated Mesopotamia from about 612 to about 330 BCE. It built a large empire that under their king, Darius the Great, extended into parts of Europe and India. It created a government with efficient tax collection system. Darius allowed locals in conquered lands to keep their customs and religions, which was very important because it decreased the possibility of rebellions. And he had many spies working for him. You, you know, it was one of the first times in history where spies were used in such large numbers on such organized scale. The Hebrews, or Jews. Hebrews established the first monotheistic religion, or Judaism. They believed in one God. So when you think of monotheistic religions, think of one God. So, they were the first to establish a monotheistic religion of Judaism. This belief in one God influenced later monotheistic religions such as Christianity and Islam. They have a holy book. It's called the Torah, so it's like the Jewish Bible. 
they have the Ten Commandments, believed to have been given to Moses by God and forbade immoral activities such as murder, stealing, etc. Ancient Greeks The Greeks were the first Europeans to develop a civilization. The Greeks mastered math, astronomy, navigation, and architecture. They received many of their ideas through cultural diffusion, exchange of ideas with other cultures. It's very important that you learn about cultural diffusion because th from my experience this term always shows up on the regions. And one example was the Phoenician alphabet. That's what they borrowed from other cultures. And one of the things about Greece is they had mountains terrain which made it very difficult for people to unite which equals development of independent city-states such as Athens and Sparta equals some level of protection from invasions. It wasn't that Greece was completely safe from invasions, they weren't, but those natural barriers such as the mountains made it more challenging to invade them. Now we're going to briefly discuss Athens and Sparta, uh, which were the most important Greek city-states uh, that you need to know for your global regions. Athens was democratic, there were a direct democracy, but only male citizens could vote on their own laws. So, for instance, if you were a woman, you had no rights in Athens, no voting rights. If you were a slave, you had no rights. And if you were a man, but you were not Athenian citizen, you still had no rights. Only male citizens could vote on their laws. Which was still significant because it never happened in other regions of the world prior to Athens. Sparta was completely totalitarian and they focused mostly on strong army and survival of the fittest. As far as military is concerned, Sparta had a strong army, but Athens had a powerful navy. So, and Athens also encouraged arts and philosophy, while Sparta was not so much focused on those issues as much as they were on obedience and strong army. Cultural Contributions of Ancient Greeks Hippocrates, the father of medicine, he theorized that diseases had natural causes and could be cured, and modern doctors had to take Hippocratic oath. Greeks also contributed a lot in geometry, architecture, democracy, which we discussed earlier, philosophy, Plato, Aristotle, and Socrates. We're not going to go into detail about each of those philosophers, but if you need to learn more about them, feel free to do your research. And literature, Homer. For one example is Homer. Not to be confused with Homer Simpson. <laughs> you know, it happens on the regions. I mean, I've seen some ridiculous, some really ridiculous answers on, on global regions, but so you really need to do your research before you take your regions. Alexander the Great. Well, Alexander the Great, we're just going to br very, 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 very briefly discuss him. He was a great Macedonian king. He built a huge Hellenistic empire. What is Hellenistic? It was really a mix of Greek, Persian, and Egyptian cultures. And he actually conquered the Persian empire. And he built a huge empire that extended as far as India and spread Hellenistic ideas. You know, Alexander was a brilliant military tactician. Even some of the modern militaries study his philosophies. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, the area that he conquered and how he conquered, it was unbelievable. Way ahead of his time. Now we're going to discuss the ancient Rome. Rome is created civilization that was a blend of Greek, 
Hellenistic and oh, Roman cultures. Art, architecture, and philosophy played a huge role in Roman cultures, but nearly all of those features they borrowed from the Greeks. While the engineering was a great Roman accomplishment, because Romans built roads, bridges, aqueducts, sewage systems, I mean, you name it, they had it. Roman law, the 12 tables of Rome, 451 BCE, were a set of laws that stated that all Roman citizens were equal under the law and an accused person was innocent until proven guilty, which was very significant, so they had to provide evidence that an accused person was guilty before they could be charged with a crime. And there was a freedom of opinion. And judges' decisions were kept for record to use in future judicial cases, which is very similar to what's being done today in many modern judicial systems. Once again, you, I mean, you can't use the United States in your global regions, but you might be able to use an example of how uh, European, Western European judicial systems work. Okay, now we're going to discuss the fall of the Roman Empire. What happened was the empire was a little bit too big to manage in the year 200 in 85, it was divided into two parts, the Western Roman Empire, which was located in Rome, and the Eastern Roman Empire, which was located in Constantinople. One of the problems that it faced were, it was the economic problem. There was huge unemployment because there were a lot of slaves throughout the empire, and as you know, slaves have to work for free, and this discouraged people from hiring real, you know, Romans, whom they had to pay a salary, and taxes were extremely high, and this resulted in less money that people had to spend, which further uh, destroyed the Roman economy, which resulted in a large number of poor people. There was also a lot of hunger because of shortages of food. Another reason was the Christianity. This new religion, which we will discuss a little bit later, discouraged war. And lastly, invasions from barbarians, which resulted in the fall of the Roman Empire, the Western Roman Empire, in the year seven, uh, 476, I'm sorry, and the Eastern Roman Empire lasted until 1453. Okay. Ancient China, Han Dynasty, 206 to 220. Strong centralized government. Government officials had to take very difficult entrance exams to be selected for their jobs and established a network of trades along the Silk Road and they traded things like spices, silk and other products with the Roman Empire. So this is how briefly we're going to discuss the Han Dynasty and it's an important topic definitely is but those are few important details broken down that you need to know for your regions. And of, of course before taking any regions exam you might want to study on it a little bit further and do some research but those are just the basic things Confucianism it was a philosophy developed by Confucius in China during the 6th century he developed five relationships so when you think about Confucianism when it comes to your regions you have to know about the five relationships what are the five relationships? Well, first one, children have to obey their parents and younger siblings must obey older ones. Poor people must obey the rich. Good rulers must be obeyed. Wife must obey her husband 
and everyone should treat each other with respect. Ancient India. When we talk about inch, the ancient India, we have to discuss the caste system. And caste, when you think about caste, there were really social classes in India. In some ways, they still exist today, although the Indian government is trying to overcome this system. Brahmins, priests, Kshatriyas, rulers and warriors, vices, traders and small-scale officials, sudras, unskilled workers, and of course pariah, untouchables, who usually have the worst jobs. The lower the caste, the more people it has. So this is a system that still continues to, to affect India even to this day. So the Gupta Empire, when you think of India, for the regions, if you have a thematic question about it, they're most likely going to ask you about the Gupta Empire. And it flourished from the year uh, 320 until the year 535. And they united Indian lands around the Ganges River and encouraged trade with other places around the world. Uh, mostly, you know. And the you know, trade in spices and other products, peace and prosperity. And under the Gupta Empire, India made great accomplishments in arts, science, math, for example, the concept of zero, decimal system, the concept of infinity, etc. All these were accomplishments of the Gupta Empire. And Gupta fell because of invasions from Hans from Central Asia. Hinduism has no known founder. It was founded in India around 1600 BCE. It's a polytheistic religion, meaning that they believe that there were many gods, as opposed to Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, who believed in monotheistic religions, meaning there is only one god. Hinduism believed in the concept of reincarnation, which is a belief that all souls are reborn after death, but many might be reborn in a body of animals, depending on how good their karma is. Um, they believed in Dharma and Karma. Dharma believed in non-violence, fasting and self-denial, and karma means that people who did good things will have good karma and will be reincarnated into higher life forms. Buddhism was founded in India around 600 BC by Gautama, uh, later called known as Buddha, which according to Buddhists means enlightened one. And according to Buddhism, life is full of suffering and there are four noble truths. And uh, first one is you have to practice kindness and love. You, know, you gotta speak. Second one, you gotta speak the truth. Third one, you have to respect the people. And fourth one, live according to righteousness. And those who follow it will achieve nirvana, which is not a music band, but a perfect soul with eternal life of happiness. Christianity. Christians are people who follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. Christianity originated in the Middle East around 2,000 years ago. Yeah, major beliefs was that Jesus was the Son of God, and there was brotherhood, peace, and charity. Those are basic principles of Christianity, and also that he died for human sins. And after he died, he was resurrected, and he rose to heaven. After Jesus died, his teachings were spread by apostles. Eventually, it became the dominant religion of, in the Roman Empire. And uh, well, Christians have a holy book known as the Bible. They have an Old Testament, uh, which is based on Jewish Torah, you know, the Ten Commandments and the New Testament, which describes the life of Jesus and the Apostles. Islam 
It was founded in the 7th century by Muhammad, whom Muslims believe to be the prophet from Allah, who is God, according to Islam. Uh, their holy book is called Quran, and the main beliefs are five pillars of faith. First one is there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. Second one is Muslims must pray five times a day. Third one is charity. Fourth one is fasting. And fifth one is pilgrimage to Mecca. Uh, 